With an estimated value of $200 million and being the size of a literal train, it's hard to imagine it going missing. But did it really just disappear? Or was the train even real to begin with? On today's edition of 5 Minute History, we'll take a look into the missing Nazi gold train that is said to reside in Walbrzyc, Poland. The story goes like this. In 1945, nearing the last days of the war, high-ranking Nazi officials took gold, jewels, and other valuable artifacts plundered from the Jews and made an attempt to escape, which no doubt happened. But in this particular instant, the Nazi officials put these stolen goods on a train, which made their way for Switzerland, but ultimately ended its journey supposedly resting in the 13th century castle named Kisiaz in Walburich, Poland, where an estimated 330 tons of gold, jewels, and other riches laid abandoned until today, where modern scholars and archaeologists regularly make efforts to try to find the train and prove its existence. And with that said, here's the story of the lost train of Walburich. On April 5th, 1944, Hungary fell to the Red Army, prompting Arpad Toldi and his selected men to move their plan swiftly into action. And soon after, a train carrying 24 carriages of stolen treasure and 42 carriages of police, Nazi officers, and miners prepared to begin their journey towards Switzerland. The train first departed sometime before Christmas in 1944, making its first stop only 120 miles from Budapest in the town of Ziri, where it added to its stock, taking stored loot from Albania Castle and continuing this pattern several times throughout small towns or cities, eventually making their arrival at Brenberg Banya, where it stayed for 92 days, where cargo such as gold, jewels, and pelts were counted and sorted. Following this stop, the train began the second leg of its journey, and come spring 1945, the war was coming to a close, and Toldi was in true belief that the Soviets were hunting both him and his treasure-ridden train. It is during this time that Toldi grew exceedingly cautious and unsurprisingly double-crossed the workers and officials on the train. And on March 30th, 1945, Toldi, his family, and a few selected members gathered the most valuable items and made their way for the Swiss border, leaving Lonzo Avar to take the train to its final destination. However, not all would go to plan for Toldi and his subordinates. As once they reached the Swiss border, their entry would be refused. This would not deter Toldi, as he turned to SS officer Wilhelm Hoddle, and in exchange for some of the stolen goods, roughly 10%, he would have fake passports forged for the party. And it is here that the trail of Toldi and Hoddle run cold, and only speculation will answer where they might have gone. But back to the train. On May 16, 1945, the train made its arrival to Werfen, where it quite notably found itself in the hands of the US military. The train stayed here for four weeks as U.S. Army investigators interrogated the remaining crew, learning about the train's unsettling history. During this time, the train was named the Werfen Train, and its guards would finally be separated. The Hungarian guards, along with the Americans, emptied the train and began to sort its contents. During this time, over 1,500 crates were emptied, containing gold, jewelry, watches, fine china, and 1,500 Persian rugs. It is also during this time that the Soviets would demand the contents of the train, and wanting to avoid any international disputes. The U.S. didn't really record much during this time. However, three years later, the U.S. would acknowledge their position on the train, where they stated that the stolen goods had no identifiable owners, nor an identifiable country, due to the post-war conditions, and therefore belonged to, well, no one. And expectedly, the U.S., after what it already pillaged in 1945, yes, the U.S. soldiers took many valuables for themselves to sell it internationally or to keep, with the likes of General Collins, who took much more than you could fit in your bag, taking hundreds of items from the train for his private villa and personal rail car, which in similar fate happened with most of the goods from the train, with $4 million worth being quickly shipped to the U.S. for auction. However, it was also in 1945 that Toldi turned himself in, and while under arrest, he revealed the location of buried gold and other valuables that were a part of the train, most likely the more valuable goods that he stole prior. But that's where the story ends, and there is no more information on whether the goods were found or not, or if they were, where they went. However, in a few months, Toldi would be set free with no charges, really questioning how valuable the information he gave up was. And that's where the mystery begins with many believing that the train never actually made it to Walbrzych and entered an abandoned coal mine 
near the Casillas Castle. After all, there were miners on the train, or the further excavations approved by the Polish government that were not near this location add to its mystery. Although the likely conclusion is that the train was scavenged for most of its worth from Toldy, U.S. officials, and others along the way, it prompts the question, what really happened to the lost Nazi gold train? Still hidden somewhere in Poland? Or was the train pieced apart with its treasure buried around the train's many stops? Or did someone get to the train first, while the cloud of war was still looming? It is here that the story is left to your imagination. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, 